Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me today for today's painting lesson. So today we're going to be doing a really cute Wally painting. Hopefully you guys like doing it as much as I do. I love Wally. I happen to think that he is super cute. So I'm excited to do this painting. I think you guys are going to like it. So today we are going to be using two brushes of the a Roic set. You can get these on Amazon. It has a wide variety of um, brushes that you can use uh, from here. We're going to be using these two brushes. Um, we're going to start by using, oop, got a little bit of red on that. Let me wash that off. We're going to be using our square brush and our round tip brush. We're also going to be using some of these napkins. You can use any type of paper towels. If you happen to have an old rag, you can use that as well. Um, and we're going to start doing this painting. So we're just going to be using these two brushes. I'm using a size 8 by 10 canvas board. Um, you guys can use paper, anything um, you guys want to use that you guys have accessible. Um, so today we're going to be using these two brushes. Let's go ahead and start by putting these into our water. Our painting is going to be done using our primary color, starting off with our yellow, blue, red, white, and black. We're going to start using those colors, and we're going to be starting off by putting our brushes in our water to get them nice and ready for mixing so that we get a nice, smooth, blended picture. Remember, water is what makes your painting look soft and smooth. It is the answer and the key to a nice, blended painting. So we're going to start actually by just making sure that our brushes are in our water and we're going to pick up our round tip brush. So we're going to be using our sizes 5, 8 and size 8 today. Brush, round tip, and we're going to start by adding some of that water and mixing it into our corner of our yellow. The reason we're starting in the corner versus in the middle is because I don't like to get the middle dirty in case we want to use it for later on. I have that clean uh, yellow right there in the middle. So I like to mix all my colors all the way around first before I use that. I want to make sure my painting is my paint is nice and soft so that I can spread it out better. And we're going to start by drawing out our frame for what's going to be Wally. So we're gonna start by drawing a nice big square. I'm gonna put three fingers at the edge of my paper and do two lines on both ends. So three fingers. If you have a larger paper, you could put your whole hand. Mine's kind of small. So I only put three or two fingers. From here, let me add a little bit of red in case you guys can't see that very well. There we go. From here, we're going to bring it up. And we're going to make a nice big square about halfway up our canvas. Okay, so we're going to bring it up. And the easy way to make a straightish line is to not move your wrist. Try to bring your wrist from the bottom, keep your hand straight and just drag it nice and slow. So you get a straightish line. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just makes good practice. We're going to come down and bring that up. And that wasn't very straight. Again, it's OK. doesn't matter. And then we're just going to come in and create a little line there. Perfect. From here, we just created a little frame for our Wally character. We are going to come in and start to create the sides as well. So we're going to make the tires on the sides by picking up our brush, just making a little square like that. And we're making two different shapes here. And these are the chunky tires that he has on the side. Remember, always use that water to help your paint spread. So it doesn't get stuck. If you have white spots on your painting, that means you didn't get enough water or not enough paint. We want your paint to be smooth and easy to push around so that we can push it around easily on our canvas too. All right. So from here, my dears, we're going to make a nice little rectangle in the middle. 
It's going to be about maybe three fingers worth of space. So put three fingers, make a little line right in the middle. And we also want to make it about three fingers thick. And this is going to be the little neck that we're going to be drawing out for Wally. So right now we should have a total of four squares or more like two squares, two, rec two rectangles. So we have a square, square, rectangle, rectangle. And you can make this square a little bit longer too. It doesn't have to be so square. It can be just a little longer. And what we're going to do is we're going to create little boxes from here on out. We're going to start by going up, making a little box. Go a little up again, make another little box. And we're making it smaller and smaller until we get to the top. Oh, they're really small. Check that out. So at this point, we started off with the yellow and the red, created a nice large box in the center, about halfway up our canvas. Then we cut that in half and made two lines going sideways. Okay, so our canvas was in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we added our nice long neck or the beginning of it. And then it started going smaller and smaller and it extended into what is the tip of what is gonna be separating the two eyes. All right. So I'm gonna come back, get a little bit more water and I'm gonna create more paint. I'm gonna add a couple of more drops to that. Add some yellow to it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of red as well. Just so that you guys can see the color. And I'm gonna to start to create the eye shape, okay? So right here, I'm gonna create a little arch going up, nice and big. It's gonna look almost like eyebrows. You wanna make them sort of the same size. If you can't, that's okay. We're gonna come in and fix them later. And this is going to be this really interesting shape where it's going to go small. This line is going to curve down. And then this line is going to curve down. So it's going to go, see, almost like a pear. So down, and then it's going to get bigger. This is going to curve. And this is going to get chunky on the side. So, okay, let me draw that for you. Down. Okay. And you can do that to the other side as well. And then on top here, we're going to just go up a little bit. And then the rest of it is going to be big and chunky. So we're just going to come around. And if it doesn't look perfect, remember it doesn't have to. We are going to paint this in. And look at that. That's more or less our Wally shape right there. So you can feel free to pause this painting at any moment. You can pause the video. I apologize at any moment. And that way you can catch up. I am gonna continue now by moving on to my square brush. So you can pause the video or continue with me if you guys are already caught up. I'm gonna start first by painting the exterior section all the way around. So then it's easier to fill in the inside, okay? Or you know what? No, scratch that. We're gonna actually start with the yellow first, huh? See, even I mess up sometimes, and that's okay. So sometimes when you do paintings, there's two different ways to do them. You, or at least that I usually do them that way. You can either start by do, painting like a coloring book by painting in sections first, or like some of the paintings that we've done, you start from the background and then you add layers and layers and layers until your painting is finished. Right now, we're going to do it sort of like a coloring book status. 
And then we're going to start added, adding on top the layers. So let's start off first with our lighter color. That is why we're going to start with our sections instead of starting with our layering. Because we want to start with our lighter color. We don't want to dirty our water. We don't want to dirty the center. Wally's kind of yellow. So if I start with the background, let's say I would make it like a dark blue. Um, then that would dirty my yellow and my water and I wouldn't get a clean yellow. And we're looking for a clean yellow. So let's start with the coloring book style by starting with the yellow on the body of our Wally. So I'm just gonna get some of that pure yellow because I'm not really gonna mix anything with it. I'm gonna add some water and just use a pure yellow. I'm not making a color mixture so I can dip right into the middle at that point. And I'm gonna start to just paint the inside of this box. And like I always tell you guys, I want you to pretend that your brush is like a ballerina. Pretend that she's dancing on her toes and not on her bottom. Okay, so we want to go nice and slow with our brush. Pick up some more of that yellow and let's get it nice and blended. If your painting is well hydrated and it has a good amount of water, then it should slide really easy. If you're having a problem with it and it's looking scratchy like that, then that means that you don't have enough water. So you need to pick up a little bit of that water and a little bit more of that yellow. And we're going to start to fill that in. I'm also going to begin to fill in that neck as well. And there you go. Doesn't have to look perfect. We're going to come back and re-outline it again in a little bit. This is just to add a basic coat before we start to decorate it. If you feel a little safer, you can also go from side to side. Up and down, but you always wanna go nice and light. If you have enough water, this should be easy. All right, next. We're going to pick up a little bit of this white. Make sure your brush, by the way, is nice and washed. We want to clean it really well in that water. We're going to add a couple of drops to our white. And we're going to start to mix that really well. We're creating a nice big puddle of that white there. Mix, mix it. Make sure that the water is combined really well with that white. Then you're gonna pick up a little tiny drop of this black and we're gonna add that to the white. Okay, so these little hairs on your brush serve kind of like a whisk when you're making a cake. So make sure you use them and you get this really well mixed. Make sure you use these bristles really well. So here's the problem though. Sometimes if your brush has too much paint on it, you lose control of it when you press down, your paint goes everywhere. And we don't wanna do that. We wanna be able to control our paint. So what we're gonna do is we are going to put our brush into our water, wash it off, then we're gonna dry it. And with that nice dry damp, it's almost damp, it's not fully dry, okay? We're gonna pick up that gray. And we wanna have control of how much we're adding to our brush. See how it's not filled up all the way to the top? That's what we're looking for. And then we're gonna come in and begin to paint in these eyes. That's the second darkest color is this light gray. So again, we decided to start with our lighter colors first in sections instead of layering the colors because we don't wanna dirty these colors. If you notice, I did get a drop of water here and that's okay. If it looks a little off, I'm gonna color in that background and you won't be able to tell that that's there. Sometimes when you're painting, you need to be a little bit more forgiving and kinder to yourself and understand that in painting, you can change all kinds of stuff. There's no such thing as messing up. There's no such thing as being bad, especially in this class. We're just exploring and trying to just have fun.
Okay, so we're going to go over it nice and smooth. As it's drying, you can go over it a few times with your brush and that'll start to smooth away the lines. The harder you press, the more you push the paint out of the sides and the more lines you'll leave behind. The lighter you press, the more you'll even out the line so you get a nice blended effect instead. And if this doesn't look so straight, that's fine. We are gonna be able to go back with that darker color and fix that. And you know what? Let's add some of this gray to the bottoms of the wheels as well. So let's pick up this gray and let's start filling in the bottom of the wheels or the bottom of the tires. If you run out of paint, come back, pick up a little bit of water, drop it in the corner of your white. Remember, we don't wanna use all of it and mix you up some more of that gray. Mix you up some more of that gray. Or mix yourself up some more of that gray if you want to be appropriate, but you got it, guys. Mix you up some of that gray. Mix it nice and soft. Right here, it did go a little bit darker. You want to go a little bit lighter. Okay. If you guys liked it darker, you could stay darker. Remember, everybody has their own style. If you happen to not like this light gray or dark gray, you can always blend it and make it the color that you like it. Awesome, look at that. So I'm gonna go from right to left and left to right. until we get a nice straight, smooth, blended effect down there. There we go. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna be doing all that outlining later on. Cool. All right, now let's move on to that background that we were gonna do earlier. Okay, we're going to give this some time to dry. And by doing that, we're going to move on to the background. Okay, that's going to give us the time to finish this. And then by the time we let the background dry, we're going to be able to come back and work on the top. So I'm going to decide to make the background sort of like a turquoise color. So I'm going to pick up some of this blue. And I'm going to mix it towards the middle. I'm not really combining it with a red or the yellow or the gray. I'm just kind of finding a space for it, okay? To that, I'm gonna pick up some white and begin to mix that in. You should get a really pretty baby blue color. And then from there, I'm gonna add just a little bit of that yellow. And that's gonna give me a really pretty turquoise color or teal. If it's dark, it's teal. If it's light, it's a turquoise. Okay, this one's more of a nice dark teal. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this color and what I'm gonna do, still using my same square brush, okay? You're gonna wanna make enough of it, by the way, so that we can fill in all of that background. So if you need to make a lot, this is your chance to pause the video and make a good amount of this blue background or else you're gonna be making it over and over again if you run out. Okay, so I made a nice amount here, that's enough. A little bit more yellow, I want it on the greener end. Nice. If you want it lighter, add more white. If you think, teacher, why is my paint look green? Add more blue and add more white. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my brush on the edge of the eye and I'm gonna drag it up. If you are patient enough with your brush, you'll get a really nice solid line. So I'm gonna put it at the edge of the line in the corner of the eye and I'm just lightly dragging it nice and slow. I'm scooting that paint around the eye
there you go. And then from there, I'm gonna bring my brush down the side of the neck. And pay attention to how that orange is already erasing. Go on top of the orange. Look at that. And then from there, I'm gonna go beneath or on the side and swipe up from the bottom up, from beneath to the top. Okay, from the bottom to the top. And we're gonna start to smooth it down the side. If you want it a little bit darker, you can add some more blue from the bottom and start to work that up. And we're gonna do the same on the top. I'm gonna to bring my brush, bring it along the center, outline the side of the eye. And look at that. We outlined his eye without having to use a skinny little brush. If you want it a little lighter, you can always add a little bit more white to it and get a lighter baby blue. Look at that. That looks really nice. Let's continue the same towards the opposite side. Bringing in your brush. Slowly, slowly sliding it down, creating that outline. And I'm just painting that in. We're gonna continue working this towards the bottom. Again, I outline the eye first. Then we're gonna outline the side of the neck, the body, and then the side of the body and up above that tire. And we're gonna to start to also paint that in. And again, if you want it a little darker, you can start with that darker blue, start scraping that darker blue underneath. And then little by little, start picking up that lighter blue and start mixing that in so it starts to get a little lighter. We want to go around nice and slow. You guys are done. You can start drying it with a piece of paper. I have at my studio a fan that I like to use, but you can use a folder, a piece of paper while you're waiting for everybody else to catch up. You can go ahead and use this. Okay. You can also pick up your round tip brush and I forgot to mention this section. As we go up on the side of the eyes, we're gonna have these little gaps in here. We're gonna use our round tip brush to pick up that blue. And we're gonna start to fill in this space as well. So I'm gonna come in and just sort of outline the triangles first, underneath the little step. So I know more or less, okay, that's where this is gonna be located. See, so I'm doing the steps first. Nice. And then I'm gonna outline the eye. And then I'm painting that section in. 
And look, now it looks like the eye is curving down the side there. And some of you guys are thinking, okay, but that doesn't make sense. Because then you cut into the eye, right? We cut into the eye a little bit there. That's true. And I'm going to show you right now how we're going to fix that. If we cut into the eye, that's okay. We're actually going to be using some more of that blue. And in that eye space, we are going to come in and actually make a nice round circle with that blue. Let's get a little bit more of that other blue. And on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make a nice big round circle. And again, look at my circles. My circles are not perfect, that's okay. Okay, and we're gonna pick up a little bit of this white and some more of that blue. So again, white and more blue to make a lighter blue. And I'm gonna mix it inside that blue that we use in the background. So I'm adding more white to it and more blue. And we're gonna start to paint in the eyes. And that's gonna change the color of this eye versus the background. Okay, we're making it just a little bit lighter. Using the same blue, we're changing it all up. And we're gonna paint in all of that. And the way I make my circles is I start by making sure the outside, I just let my brush kind of create that circle on the outside, okay? And then I start to swirl it towards the middle and then kind of let it spin and do its thing. Okay, so again, I start on the outside and then I start to bring it in towards the middle and the brush is doing the line by itself. Nice and circular, nice. Let's do the same to the other one. Again, I'm gonna start on the outside, making the circle as best as I can. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect and we're here to practice. So don't be hard on yourself. So we're here to just have fun. And we're gonna pick up that light blue. I'm gonna start by making that exterior circle. And then I'm gonna to start to drag my brush in towards the middle and then swirl it. And my brush, look at how the hair is spinning, creating that swirl. After you do that, then you can come back and soften it up. For some reason, these round tip brushes automatically give you a really good circle. There we go. See how nice that's starting to look? Okay, so I'm gonna make a line. We're pressing nice and hard so that the brush opens. And then I'm starting to drag it again and come to the middle. And there we go. And we have his cute little eyes. We can already start adding a little bit of shimmer by picking up a little bit of white with your brush the same round tip one. And we're just gonna slide some of that white underneath to create a little shimmer line. If your paint is still wet, add a nice thick amount and then little by little start to push it down. And that way it creates a nice little effect there. Same thing on this side. You push it down and then it starts to blend. It starts to look nice. Wet on wet painting, guys. That's what we call that. All right. So while we're letting that dry, remember we still had all of this in the middle. So much yellow. What are we to do? We're going to start by making a darker orange this time. We're going to wash our round tip brush. We're going to continue to use that same round tip brush we've been using. And we're gonna pick up a little bit of this red and mix it to the corner where we had that orange before. Remember the one we outlined? Or I had yellow and added a little bit of red to it, but we're gonna make a little corner if you didn't make the orange like me to outline. Pick any corner around your yellow and add some red to it. And let's start mixing that in. Okay, now this isn't gonna be very dark. 
So the way we're going to bring it down a notch to make it just a little bit darker is we're going to add a tad drop of black. And if you notice, this is just a tiny little drop. We're going to mix it in our orange and oof, look at that. It turned it really, really dark on mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up more red. And then I'm going to scoop in the yellow little by little. And there you go. I'm starting to get more of like a brownish color. So I'm going to scoop in more yellow, more yellow. And that's going to start to give me more of like a lighter orange again. See that? It's kind of like a brown even. I'm going to add more red to that. And there we go. We got that orange color. See that? So when you add your black, you want to add a tiny little bit. It's a little bit goes a long way. So if it's too dark, add more yellow to it. And add a little bit more red to it. Just to get it more orange on the orange side. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to outline from the top first. So we have more control of what the picture is looking like. So up here, I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna start to outline the top of these two lines. And again, I think my brush might be a little too loaded with paint. So I'm going to come in to my palette and scrape some of that off, remember. And you know what? I'm even gonna wash my brush and start all over again with the color. Because remember, the more color we have on our brush, the less we can control the color. So let's pick up again a little bit of that orange right at the edge. Okay. And let's see if the lines look a little different now that I cleaned my brush. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's a finer line for sure. So let's make another line at the bottom. There we go. I'm gonna pick up some more paint. Remember, whenever you run out, don't be scared to pick up a little bit more paint. Then we're coming down, making another line. If you like that darker brown that we made before when we added a lot of that black, you can use a little bit more of it too. And you don't have to use a light orange. Maybe if you like that dark color, you can use the dark color too. Okay, so there we go. Right on top of that. I created a line right on top of this large square so that I could start forming the rest of the neck. So we started from the top, created lines to separate wherever we put those little squares to begin with for the neck. Then we worked our way down as we added lines to the sides. We're starting to form our neck now. Finally, we're at the bottom where I'm gonna add my final line. And if you noticed, I sort of went a little bit over that blue. So I added my color and I went just slightly over my blue, sort of like halfway on my blue, halfway on my yellow, right in the middle. Perfect. From there, I'm gonna seal the top of this larger section of wall. So I'm going to grab my brush, maybe add a little bit more black to it, a tiny bit, because remember, a little bit goes a long way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hand and drag it. If it's easier for you guys to turn your canvas sideways so you drag your hand more comfortably, do that. And remember, your paint has to have plenty of water or else it's going to get stuck and you're going to have a crooked line. So make sure you add water to your paint. Make sure you pick up penny of paint and that way we can move on to make that line 
without anything disturbing it. So let's start. There we go. Nice and clean. I'm going to turn my canvas over, pick up a little bit more of that paint, and I'm going to continue the line sideways. And there we go. Now that I did that top line, I'm going to move on to do the one at the bottom, and that way my hand is not on top of the paint. And if you happen to go over it a little bit too much, pick up a little bit more of that dark or orange. And I'm going to make my line a little bit thicker. And the way you make it thicker is by squeezing your brush down a little bit harder. That's how you get those thick lines. And you know what? I'm going to add it on both sides. Why not? That looks pretty cool. I'm liking those thick lines. There we go. And we have our little Wally outline. Next, we're gonna start to add some lines around Wally. We're gonna pick up this orange color. And we're just going to do a couple of lines across the neck. You can do three lines, four lines, five lines. Then on the side, we're going to do two lines on each side. These don't have to be really big. They're about three of my fingers. But again, this is a little piece, so maybe they're as big as your hand if you want them to be, if your paper is bigger than mine. So from here, we're going to pick up our round tip brush, and we're going to also make some lines going across horizontally. You can add a couple of scratches down the side. Remember Wally was a little rusty. So we came in, added the lines on the neck, added the lines on the buckles on the side. And now we're gonna pick up some more of that baby blue. I'm washing off the orange from my brush and picking up some of that baby blue we made in the back. We're gonna add a nice little box in the front here for Wally, he has a nice little screen. We're making it nice and long. Nice long blue screen. Nice long rectangle. Then from there, we're gonna wash that brush off again. And we're gonna pick up a heart color. So if you wanna make your heart a purple, a yellow, remember your Wally doesn't have to look exactly like mine. I'm gonna use the red. And again, you can choose your heart color to be different if you want it to be. Maybe you want purple, maybe you want orange, maybe you want green. Change it up. So pick up your heart color. See, I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue on the side, red and blue, make purple. And I'm just gonna add a little bit to Wally there. And now we have some purple outline underneath the heart. Next, we're gonna wash off our round tip brush and we're gonna pick up some more of that orange. 
Make sure you add more yellow to it though. We want it to be just a little bit lighter than the other one. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow, making it a little bit brighter. There we go. So we have more of a lighter orange now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go right beneath this line and we're gonna draw another little line. A nice long one actually. This line, we're gonna make two lines on the edge to make it look like a table, we're gonna close that in and then we're gonna fill it in. So a line and two lines parallel to each other going vertically and then another line going horizontally to make a nice long rectangle, just like the screen shape, okay? And this is gonna be the top of what we're gonna make a vase. So I'm going to make two lines coming down to this cute little vase. And then I'm going to close it off at the bottom. And I'm going to start to fill in that vase with my orange color. If you want to use your square brush, if you think that it's easier to use your square brush, feel free to use that to fill in that vase. Maybe it'll be easier. You can just swipe it for the top of the vase. Swipe it across with that color and then just fill in the bottom. Next, I'm gonna pick up that darker orange color and I'm just gonna give it a quick outline. Because we have a darker orange, it looks almost like the, like a brown, right? It's the orange with the little bit of the black. So that's the color we're using just to add that outline there. The next step is going to be to make a plant. So I'm going to rinse off my round tip brush. Let's wash it off. And next, I'm going to make some more yellow into this baby blue that we made. Okay, I'm going to mix more yellow into it. And I'm going to mix more blue. More yellow, more blue. And that's going to start to give me a really pretty green color. Okay. So just to use that same space so that we don't waste it, I'm adding more yellow and more blue to that baby blue space we used. And I'm gonna pick up this green and we're gonna to start to draw out a stem. So from the bottom, we're gonna bring a line going up. And to the side, we're gonna create a little leaf. And I wanna show you guys how to make this leaf. I'm gonna add a little bit of more of this blue to my green, just to make it a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this. So I'm coming up with my line, my little plant line. And then to make my leaf, I'm gonna stem out one side, and here's another one. One, two. With your round tip brush, you're gonna start at the end, and you're gonna press lightly, and then you're gonna to start to press harder and look at how your brush opens. And you're gonna drag that down. And that's one petal. You can choose to go back and make it a little rounder on the sides. And you have one petal there. Let's do it on the other side, right on top. I'm gonna to go on the edge. This is where the tip of my leaf is gonna be up here. So I'm gonna press lightly bring down and then I'm going to start to press hard and continue to bring it down and then I'm going to start to lift it up and press lightly again and there you go you have a little leaf there too you can also come in and round it out on the sides if you want it to be just a little bit more curved 
So to this, to give it a little highlight, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of yellow and white on my brush. And I'm not really gonna clean my brush. If there's still blue in there, which there is, that's okay. We want it to blend with this. So I'm gonna come in and just squeeze, paint one side, bring the line down the stem, pick up some more of that yellow and white, bring it down the stem. And there you go, I got two leaves ready to go. From the outside, super cute. I love it. You can always come back, add more yellow. Super adorable. Next, we're gonna start to do Wally's little hands. So I'm gonna come back, wash this brush, my round tip, and I'm gonna use some more of that gray we had. If yours dried like mine, you can get a little bit of that black and that white and make a little bit more. So you can go light gray, dark gray, whatever gray you want for this. I'm going for like a middle gray, right? I don't want it to be too dark or too light, kind of in the middle, see that? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to draw almost like a square letter C. So it's one side, and then the other side, right? So this is how Wally's hands are, right? So we have a letter C, but nice and square. And let's work on making it nice and thick too. Remember, he's got nice big blocky hands. So you can make these nice and big or you could even use your square brush. Okay, so pick up that gray with that square brush, and create one side, other side, and then straight down. Let me pick up some white so it can stand out. One side, other side, and then straight down. Now let me do the other side. One side, the other side, and then straight down to connect both. And you can go over and over on top of it until you feel it's straightish. Next, we will pick up that same square brush and we're gonna start to work with our black now. We're gonna pick up some of this black right in the corner of our square brush. And we're gonna add a line right on top of where we put our tires. There's one line. Let's do another one on the opposite side as well. So on the black, you don't wanna to add too much water when you're gonna paint because it can get see-through and then you won't be able to get a nice creamy outline like we want it to be. Okay, you do wanna add water, don't get me wrong, but just be careful with how much you add that your paint doesn't look too see-through because we do want a nice thick coat of this black when we're painting, okay? So we're gonna make that line going across we're gonna skip a little bit of space. We're gonna bring another line going across, skip a little space, have another line coming across again. And we're gonna do this all the way to the bottom. There we go. And it's gonna to start to give us sort of like a tire effect. Get that. If you feel you wanna go at it with your gray again too, you can come in with your gray right in the middle and give it another scrape. 
And that actually starts to look pretty cool. Just saying. So again, I'm going to come in with a little bit of that gray. And I'm going to take advantage and give it a nice little scrape over the top. There you go. And again, I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to go over it with the black one last time. I always like to go back and forth with the way I do these paintings. I never just give it one swipe. I always go back and forth until I'm finally like, okay, I'm satisfied. Next, we're going to get that square brush. And instead of dragging it thick, move it so that the line is skinny. So instead of like this, move it this way. And we're going to start at the bottom and drag it down. Boom. There we go. We're going to do the same on this end. Start at the top and create that straight line down. Boom. And that's all we need right there. You're also going to get that brush that same way. And you're going to start from the end of the arm. Let me zoom in. And we're going to add the arms that way. So here's my arm. I'm going to start at the bottom and scoop it up. Then I'm going to put it sideways and I'm going to follow that line up. There we go. There's one arm. On this side, same thing. We're going to drag it sideways. You can add the line so that you know where you're going. And then just drag your arm up. Once we're done with the wheels and the arms, we're going to start to switch to our round tip brush. Our round tip brush is going to pick up some black, and we're going to start to outline from here and then work our way up. So I'm going to outline first my vase in the background. I'm going to add a couple of lines to these leaves on the side, just outline the leaf a little bit so it can stand out against the blue in the back. I'm gonna to start to outline these hands. And again, I'm picking up black paint as my paint is starting to run out from my brush. There we go. And we have his little hands outlined. There we go. Next, we're gonna to start to work on his eyes. So let's get started on how we're going to do that, okay? So as we're going around his eyes, we're going to do the pupils right in the middle first. So let's pick up some of this black. And we're going to start by outlining his pupils first, right in the middle. And again, I like to let my brush do the circle. We're using our round tip. I'm just letting the hair just sort of drag around to create that circle there. and then coil it all the way to the middle. There we go. There's one. Now let's do the other one. Start with the outside and then start to coil all the way to the middle. And there are the both pupils. For the highlight, we're gonna wash off the black from our brush, wash it off. And we're gonna scoop up some of this white and we're gonna add a nice big white dot on top over here and over here. We're also gonna add a little highlight right on the eye. 
you can come back with some more of that white and add some more of the highlight underneath the eye. If you feel it needs a little more. I'm also gonna scratch some more white into this leaf. I feel like it needs it. Maybe some white into the sides of the hands. Maybe the arms. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight on the sides of the eyes too, on the gray part. Super adorable. After we add those highlights, we're gonna move on to using our round tip brush, pick up some more of that water, and we're gonna pick up some more black. So we're going back to our black now. And I added too much paint, so I'm gonna dry my brush out and I'm gonna come back and pick up just enough so that again, I have control of my paint, not the other way around. Next, after we did this pupil and the highlights, I'm gonna get my black and I am going to be going around my blue part of my eye to give it one more black outline, nice and slow. If you guys don't feel comfortable doing this, you don't have to. So if you feel like you don't wanna add that blue, that black line going around the eye and you're, you're not, not comfortable with it, don't have to add it on, okay? There we go. And my circles aren't straight, so don't feel bad, guys. From here, we're gonna come in with our black and I'm gonna outline outside my gray. So again, I'm gonna make the bottom of the eye first and I'm gonna paint the outside of the blue or the outside of the gray. We're done with that. Don't forget that Wally is a robot, so he has a couple of screws. We're gonna do one dot up here. And we're gonna add a couple of more dots, one right over here and one right over here. And let's do that to both sides. If after this you wanna add any extra outlines to your Wally, you can totally go ahead and do that. If you feel like you want to maybe add some lines on your face, or maybe you wanna outline some of these buttons by just adding tiny little scratches. That looks good also. We can make some of these outlines stand out a little bit more. by adding some black to them. See that? It adds more contrast and more depth to our painting. And because we're in space, you can also come in and add just a couple of stars in the back. I'm using my round tip brush, adding a couple of dots. so that we can see space in the back. You can also add a little bit of white into the heart to give it a shimmer, a little bit of white into the vase as well. And on Wally's body, you can also add a little bit of white too. Just a couple of lines. See, so you can play back and forth until you're happy with your final image. 
And there we go. We have a nice little Wally painting. These stars make a perfect addition. And you can make them all short sorts of shapes and sizes, big ones, small ones. You can even add a final highlight to those tires too, just to make sure they really pop. Painting is all layering. And there we go. Not a little bit more of a highlight underneath this eye. When it dries, sometimes the colors get a little lighter. There we go, adding the final touches. And that's it. When you're done, pick up the color that you wanna choose and don't forget to sign your painting so everybody knows that you did it. And there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching my class today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's painting and I hope you guys have an awesome day. See you guys soon. Bye.